just going on guys and welcome back to our surviving java series yep uh, i actually finished recording the last episode around about an hour or so ago been uh, just going around messing around with different contraptions that i've been working on now the one thing i did want to start today's episode off with is showing you what i've done regarding the tree farm you well for the warped wood and the crimson wood so we've got our initial fungus farm here which we're still going to be utilizing for this next farm anyway so I've put a massive big on off switch for this entire contraption just over here. Obviously a lot of tidying up needs to be done. But um, yeah, we've got a red, like, redstone line that runs all the way around. And this now gets funneled into a water stream which leads down to this secondary room. Which comes in just over here and feeds into this section here. And we've got uh, three different, what do you call it, composters. Which are making bone meal for us. And then these guys lead into just giving us the warp fungus or the crimson fungus and then I'm using these guys to actually grow trees so what we've got is a massive big piston wall here in front of a very very old school activation circuit just using the grown tree as a conducting block and then so what we want to do is this switches on our bone mealer and then we can drop down to here and then we'll hop up here. Now what we can do is put some fungus in here. So if we wanted to go AFK, we need to fill all of our slots like so. And then we can put a bunch of them in here. And then we just use an auto clicker to place one every so often. But for taking down the trees, <coughs> excuse me, I've actually got two different TNT jupers. Now I know that I never, oh, I said that I was never gonna try, well, I was gonna try my best never to use these. But considering how much they cost me to make, um, obviously, not just the circuits there, but when I was making it, I accidentally created a infinite redstone loop circuit, which sent TNT everywhere, took out all of my shulkers that I had set up over there. That had my redstone shulker, my end shulker that had all of my shulker shells, plus all of my spare elytra, um, bone mill shulker, blackstone shulker, just so many shulkers got destroyed, so I'm thinking that I've sort of paid the cost of having two TNT jupers for this farm uh, just from how much I actually lost. I actually had to do a three hour end uh, run just in order to replace the shulker shells and the uh, elytra that I did lose. Now we've got the crying obsidian here obviously same blast resistance as normal obsidian so it's not going to break and we're using them as safety blocks for the TNT to drop on. And then we can go around to here and hop up here. And then we place the fungus and then obviously this grows, that gets pushed and then this block gets pulled down to a secondary dispenser over here. And that is in case this block turns into standard never rack after having grown a tree. So if it does turn into never rack, it gets pulled down, gets bone milled and then it gets turned back into the warp stuff. So then it's then free enough for me. It costs up all the amount of bone meal to have that in place. But it is definitely worth it. Just... um. For when I want to do AFK sessions, but otherwise, if I'm sort of semi AFK, I can just have bone mill in my other hand, like just there, and just switch in between rather than using double the amount. But for a full AFK session, in order to get oh, almost fell down that hole, in order to get enough of the wood and whatnot, um, what can we block up here? I've got to be really careful because there's redstone circuitry going everywhere here. So this one is the activation one, so it sends the redstone block down here flips around in, activates the whole piston wall, it then does a secondary loop back this way, deactivates this redstone torch, bringing this down, bringing this uh, block down to get bone milled in order to change it into the crimson stuff or the warp stuff. But otherwise it is working reasonably well. Um, very, oh well, not a great deal of loss, but as you see TNT blows it up, it drops, gets collected by a hopper system, and then our hopper system runs down to a storage room, which I've created down here. So we're getting an absolute bunch of the crimson stem. I've actually collected all of the warp stuff that I've been using down in our um, never hub, I want to call it. Yeah, and then I'm also going to collect some never warp blocks and some warp blocks as well uh, while I'm doing this. And then once this reached the max of the warp blocks, they will then get uh, basically funneled through to our composting area so we'll have the bone mill coming in from that so eventually it will begin to pay for itself in bone mill but for now i'm just using the bone blocks that i've made over at our skelly spawner and this is pretty much where i've been gathering oh, i forgot to turn that off this is where i've been gathering all of the wood for doing our decorating and 
building I never have because yeah I actually built this before finishing off the last episode just because I had to use so much of that warped wood and the old tree farm I was using I don't know we've got a bonus hunger there and the um, old tree farm I was using was uh, it would take about four times as long to gather as much wood but I've got an auto clicker installed so I can say it for like every five or six seconds because uh, I don't want it to overrun and then get clogged and I've figured out that the timing is around about four to five seconds in between each growing but yeah I thought I'd show you this before moving on to the episode just so you know where I am with this area and obviously this area needs a complete overhaul in looks because yeah it doesn't look fantastic um, I need to smooth out all that up there and get a natural crop up how bar chamber sorted and then obviously I don't want all of these lanterns as lighting just dotted about all over the floor so I'll probably make it a bit of a spawn proof area um, can you stop running now the only annoying thing about this farm is that there's around about three different switches I have to hit in order to make sure everything's turned off so you've got that switch the TNT switch let's just make sure nothing else is overflowing um, and then you've got the farm up top which also needs to be switched off but obviously when you're coming down here it's not too much of an uh, issue because you have to walk past all of these switches but before you go off anywhere you do actually have to make sure you turn everything off otherwise it will become quite a mess and the one leading down to here I'm quite happy that I created that that way I'm not relying on just the one or I've seen quite a few farms that are relying on four or six blocks growing the fungus and it's sort of like uh, the odds of it actually growing the fungus on that small of an area isn't fantastically great while this one actually gets you quite a lot um, can we get rid of all of this crap yes we can okay so what I actually want to work on today is the piglin trading center and that is going to be uh, above our never hub just below the never ceiling so I guess I will meet you over there all right so what I'm thinking is this is literally just underneath far little stairwell I'm not sure if I built this before or after I ended the episode well, I've just got a little stairwell that leads up to the top and obviously cupped it with uh cupped it no nope, capped it with glass so that way there's no small little spots for glass or any of the badness and then it sort of leads down here you can just drop straight in from the top all the way down to the bottom or you can also just go into this area here from this level yeah that's what I was trying to say but very very slowly so what I want to do is actually have our trading center with the piglins here and obviously we don't need a like a stupid amount of them so I'm thinking like eight that we had last time before I murdered them all and got rid of them um, that's really gonna bug me because I know that they would never up there now never up nope never up yep uh, so what I want to do is actually have probably eight of them lined up on this wall with storage I don't know on the opposite wall or should I have it on either side or I can dig it down and actually have storage underneath them like cascading storage hmm I think we need to concentrate first on just getting the actual piglins again because that is going to be an absolute chore in itself uh, but we're going to need to create cells and luckily we've just got some grey glass left yeah, and then we're just going to need our hoppers and droppers and all the fun and games before we do anything else. Uh, whatever. Yep, let's grab you and our blackstone box. Thank you. So anything else we need? Um, no, we'll get that wood box out as well. That's where all the warped wood is, by the way, that I've been using for our <laughs> never hub down below. Um, that one's empty. Yeah, I think that's a about it that we're probably going to need yeah let me work out the logistics and get the cells that i pretty much had done before uh put in behind here i'm also gonna have to clear out a little area behind here to put the timing circuit in for dispensing the items to the piglins because obviously i want that all hidden behind them rather than taking up more room than we need and then what i'm thinking is that with the hoppers underneath them we may have to do a double chain of hoppers just to increase the speed that they work at because sometimes they drop like 8 or 16 items depending on what they drop if it's I believe gravel is 16 or it's 8 I'm not 100% certain but I'm fairly sure it's 16 
and the hoppers, oh, hoppers, yep, the hoppers are obviously not quick enough to actually uh, to keep up with that. If all of them were to drop uh, gravel like simultaneously, it would chew up the hopper space. So we may need a double line of hoppers just for running it. Or try to find a different transportation method because uh, there is no water that we're allowed in the Nether, and um, yeah, you can't obviously transfer stuff in lava, can you? Because no comprende, not unless it's never right. So is that going to be big enough? I think it is. It should be big enough. Yeah. Let me sort of get the cells in place and get them in place and get the timing circuit for feeding them the gold in place because it's something I've already done before. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've been at this for the better part of around about five hours now. Uh, initially, I was just going to do a sort of super sorting system, all going to one side. But then to save myself the aggro of having to deal with the sort of dropper chains that are a lot quicker than the hoppers, I've ended up just splitting the entire pickling farm sorting into two sections. So we've got the right hand section, which has its own individual sorting system, then we'll have the left hand section with its own individual sorting system. Now, each one is five double chests, probably way, way, way overboard because I've not even got nearly enough gold to actually be pumping into them in order to fill most of these chests currently so yeah um i did actually have to go and use all of my spruce wood i had to make something like it's like what about nine or ten stacks of chests in order to make the hoppers and it's been a lot of crafting a lot of like grinding for resources but i think i've got all of it in place although i've not actually done any of the filters because i've got not well i've got not no i have none of the items actually put the filters in which is slightly annoying, which means we're going to have to feed a line of gold into these guys soon. Now, we've got the same sort of setup that we had beforehand down below. We've got a hopper clock running the droppers and then locking the hoppers and they've got time to pick up the gold. And then I've also introduced a second line up above here where we should be able to put the gold in and then it filters through. Uh, can we get... Um, have we got blocks? Oh, so we don't, you know, I'll use these. So this is like an old school uh, furnace array line where the items will feed down and then once it reaches the end it will unlock all of the hoppers below to pull one item allowing the items to feed into the droppers. It's a very very old school method but hopefully it will work. I tested it out with just some random blocks and it seems to have worked alright with that. But what I do need to do is get a bunch of gold fed into the system in order to sort of prime it and sort out all of the filters which is a little bit irritating to be honest with you um what can we do say if we just throw all of this gold in and then just let it sort of filter through um can we thank you just let that all filter through once that's filtered through then we can turn it on now the reason why I wasn't overly concerned about the sorting system is that you need to be able to feed the gold into them quick enough and Obviously, any gold farm you build, I don't think it's going to be able to keep up unless you do some insane sort of shenanigans one. Uh, I will probably be sorting out a XP slash gold farm above this one, just in order to sort of run this. And I'll be using looting, so I'll likely get more gold ingots and have them sorted straight through into here. Then obviously I'll have to grind up, grind up, no, craft up all the nuggets. Um, why are you there? Okay, that was uh, peculiar. Um, oh, that's from where I was testing it before. Yeah, we want to take out all of this stuff. And just make sure that these... Really, guys? Come on, man. Ah, look, your friend's shooting at you. Why are they not turning on one another? Oh, yeah, you're pickling head. Okay. Uh, so you've got none in you, 10. Okay, so this one seems like it's getting more because it's directly underneath the chest. So it's obviously getting double dips when they feed in. But 9, 9 is fine. And then 9 is good. And then they're feeding down. Yeah, so it is sort of keeping the same amount, which is uh, what I was looking for. And then that is now all sort of done. I don't believe them two spawn behind there, but we pickling head. Okay, and then we want to go and switch on this hopper clip. Uh, like on. and in hopes that this will work. <laughs> no, I missed it. Um, thank you. Okay, so they all picked up their stuff. 
nail through the stuff and now all the stuff has been picked up okay so that's all right the timing of it isn't too close to one another like they drop it and then them hoppers become unlocked and then they get the gold again so the items will be feeding through relatively quickly and each of these guys should have just a little over one stack to go through and then I'll go through hopefully they're feeding into the very end nope it's going to be the first line because I've got no filters on it whatsoever so oh my god I'm it's such a massive hopper chain that's the thing so they could pretty pretty much end up anywhere around here unless I've managed to lock a hopper somewhere is that something that I could have done okay no they are feeding through it's just obviously taking a very very long time yeah so I'm gonna sort out the filters once I've got the filters in and I seriously need to figure out what I want to do decorational wise because I've had to lower down the sorting systems because I really didn't want to have to go building the uh, drop evaders to take the items back up and because it's so close to bedrock I was having real issues doing the redstone just on that hopper line let alone trying to do a full sorting system up that high so I may do some sort of a lowered floor design here obviously we're going to want to cover up them hoppers but have a sort of glass framed floor over the storage thing and we'll just have like a ladder or a stairwell at the ends in order to go down there could be an idea yeah so let me figure out that while so I wait for these guys to run through their bunch of gold okay so I spent a hell of a long time sort of trying to figure out a build style for this place and I started laying down some soul sand and that sort of took me in the way of some form of barren wasteland um <laughs> yeah I didn't really know which way to go with the build style on this one and I didn't want to just mimic the style that we had down below which is sort of I, I don't know what the build style would be down here to be honest with you it's just like using a new block palette and this looks a little bit ominous and eerie down here but up top I wanted to go a little bit different lean away from the new wood type and as you can probably tell I've got a new vanilla tweaks pack done so we've got quieter a minecart so it's not obnoxiously loud I've also got quieter dispensers droppers water fire so we're not getting so overwhelmed with the noise and honestly that is so much nicer just uh, have no sound there running light through my head so I, there's a few optimizations that I need to make with this thing I've got all the sorting system in place that's all now primed and ready to go on both sides which means that we shouldn't have an issue of overflowing if we continuously feed gold to these guys I did test it in the redstone test world feeding them non-stop gold and eight of them leading to one sorting system was overwhelming it pretty quickly so I do need to optimize it so I've got easy access to this and also need to give access to the hopper clock at the back so probably a switch somewhere around here um, probably uh, somewhere underneath the ground here leading back would be handy like just a hidden little cubby hole somewhere but I opted out for having ladders around the pink here and we've just got these vines from the new textures because it goes well with the wood down below that I've used and I've sort of uh, blackstone walled all the edges of this area and then we've got all of our collections of stuff that we're getting from transferring all of our gold but I think next episode we're definitely going to have to work on a solution of getting serious amounts of gold very very quickly and that's the whole point of building this bloody enderman is doing my nothing he's been stalking me now for around about 20 minutes while I was sorting out my texture pack um, making sure that I had all the right textures I wasn't missing any there we go. come on where you are where are you I hear footsteps I don't know what he's doing. I'm not a great fan of um, your field of view changing whenever you go on Soul Sand. Is that something that we can change? Uh, graphics, frame rate, view popping, particles, and C's, brightness. Um, I don't even know where that would be. Um, all screen. Yeah, I have no idea where that would be. Is there an option for that? skin language I'm gonna to have to have a look at that to see if there's anything I could do to change that because running around here because I've got it like um, the odd blocks here that you'll get that view and then it gets really disorientating very quickly running around here and I'd rather not have that keep on zooming in and out I thought I got rid of that because whenever I use speed potions it didn't happen 
although in our base area because we've got the speed from the conduit it does happen slightly yeah i'm gonna have a look at that in between this episode and the next one but i think next episode we're definitely going to be working on the gold farm so that way we can keep on feeding these guys and then i really need to start making more work on my actual base place because that place has been neglected since this update came out i've been non-stop just playing around with the blocks and i also need to get around to doing the ceiling down below which um is probably going to get done in between episodes to be honest with you sort of like quiet time maybe i'll stream that rather than because it's going to be very tedious and very long and it's not exactly episode worthy but we've got two full sorting systems leading from our piglins i did die in between the last cut and this one in the wall i suffocated in one of these walls i accidentally used an enderpel instead of right clicking the hopper died one of the piglins had all of my neverite gear and my elytra so i had to kill him and replace it it was just uh it was a whole thing that i had to do it was a massive pain in the ass to be honest with you but um i've managed to get it all decorated in the fashion that i like i still need to go through the ceiling and get rid of the odd red block like that little corner bit there that i can see and just go through and replace all of the or get rid of the actual soul sand as well in the ceiling that i don't really like and we've got the nice little subtle particle effects that you get every now and again from this biome which is the soul sand valley which i like but i'm quite happy with the way that it's come out and i've been using the coral um obviously it dies when it's not on a water log block or in the water so it goes gray which suits this area fantastically including the coral blocks that i've been mixing in i do need to mix in a little bit more of the normal soul sand around the place just to add a little bit more texture maybe a little bit more blackstone smooth up the center platform um probably curve it off a little bit and make it more gradual rather than just this hard edge that you have to jump up on but that's all little bits and pieces I'll be touching up in between episodes. But for today's episodes, that's oh yeah, I also got the Elytra wings from the Convex of Hermitcraft, which I actually really like because that way you can actually see my back as well for some reason. I like that because, uh, yeah, I don't know. But hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode and hopefully I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.